All right, well, thank you all so much for joining us this morning. Uh, my name is Dia with Data Jumps Foundation and um, welcome and again, thanks for joining us. The Community Entrepreneurship Hour is a free monthly event that we do every second Wednesday of the month. And it's, a, it's really a platform to help entrepreneurs connect with the entrepreneurship community. Um, what we'll be doing today is we have two awesome female founders presenting and pitching their business and you will get to hear them for 10 to 12 minutes and have an opportunity to ask them questions, provide feedback. We really encourage that conversation to happen um, because they are still in their startup stages and your feedback uh, will help them. Um, while just a few housekeeping stuff to stay muted while the presentations are on and maybe start typing in your questions in the chat box so we can keep, um, keep track of all the questions. Um, also, maybe just saying hi, your name, your organization in the chat so you can introduce and make a new friend. Um, and after all the presentations are over, we will have an open networking hour, uh, 30 minutes for networking. So stick around if you wanna do that. Okay, with that, I'd like to introduce the first speaker today. Um, Akila Johnson is the founder and owner of Yes She Will Organic Hair Growth Therapy and Beard Growth Products. Uh, it, this product line helps people achieve their hair growth goals. Akila is a licensed cosmetologist and a former winner of the Big Pitch Ada. And uh, she has um, earned a nickname recently that I want to share. I think it, it's uh, the hashtag next Madam CJ Walker. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, and uh, Akila is really proud of you for that. But with that, I'm going to start sharing this PowerPoint. And okay, can you all see the slides? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Akila, it's all yours. Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, uh, Dia is going to. She said that she was going to be my clicker, so you will hear me saying next. And next, so it'll be like going to the next slide. Um, when I was in cosmetology school about uh, two and a half years ago, now my mom underwent chemotherapy, resulting in the loss of all of her hair. And um, I felt as though I needed to do something to help my mom's hair grow back. And um, in cosmetology school, uh, they were, it was all about chemicals. Rogaine, Minoxidil, it was, you know, there was nothing in there uh, that was organic and my mom couldn't have any chemicals. And um, so with the help of God in doing uh, research and um, experimenting a little bit, we came up with two formulas, one for the scalp, yes, you will, organic hair growth therapy, and one for my male clients, yes, you will, organic beard growth oil. Uh, I even have a uh, scripture to go along with this. Oh, um, yeah, sorry, next. One second, I'm having some trouble. Okay, okay. I can keep talking. I, I even have a scripture to go along with this. It's Exodus 30, 25. And uh, it says that you should make it an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary. It should be a holy anointing oil. And I truly, uh, I stand on God's word and I truly, this, pr this product is proven to work um, as you will see as we go along. And so it stands behind that on everything that it says that it does. Next. If you look at these, the people that are in these pictures, maybe you, maybe there's someone in your family that you know of that have gone through some of the similar problems from um, uh, hair loss, uh, from uh, side effects from chemotherapy, radiation, uh, male, female pattern baldness, shedding, hair fall, uh, alopecia, loss of your edges, um, a patchy beard, you can't seem to grow a beard. Uh, hair loss due to, um, um, did I say certain medications, uh, whatever you're taking, it doesn't matter because this product will work and change the slide. This is the solution. Yes, you will organic hair growth therapy and yes, you will organic beard growth oil. Next. 
this is my sister Sabrina and uh, I felt as though in doing this uh, there were so many people in my family that needed help I would say um, uh, when I went to my sister at the end of September she was in the hospital and uh, she didn't have any hair she looked like the first picture and uh, October she began using the product October the 1st October the 23rd she showed she sent me these pictures the second third and fourth pictures of her hair and as you can see in the second picture she still has like some bald patches in it or what have you uh and those grew out and in may she sent me these pictures she came to she's in texas she came to oklahoma i did a blowout on her hair and her hair is like three inches all the way around and i mean that is super amazing <laughs> next slide this is John Engel. Um, I wanted to meet him. Um, he tried the, the product back in November when I began the competition. And um, his daughter showed me a picture of him and told me that he was dealing with lung cancer and that his hair had fallen out. And so I blessed her with the hair growth therapy. And she said, um, I don't know if he's going to try this or not. And I said, just give it to him anyway. You know, his hair is going to grow back. And he did. And uh, he used the product, and this is like progression over that. And in May, this she sent me this picture. And um, so that is the result of his hair growth. So I am super excited on this. <laughs> Next slide. My target market uh, I, is natural hair loss, thinning hair, um, uh, scalp and or skin inflammation. So it doesn't only grow your hair, but uh, it will make you have a, a healthy scalp as well. It uh, get rid of dandruff, fights dry scalp, dry skin, um, uh, itchiness, flakiness under your beard or what have you. The beard growth all will help with, with that. Um, the uh, sores or things like that. I've had a, a person who's had sores on their head and they used the hair growth therapy and their sores healed. They, you know, they didn't have the sores in their hair anymore. My current clients right now are, it has expanded since the competition. And uh, it was in, um, it's in Oklahoma, uh, different, several places in Texas, Denver, Colorado, uh, Florida, uh, Washington, um, and according to the American Academy of Dermatology, about 80 million people in the United States have heredity thinning or baldness. This is how huge the market is for me. About 80 million people can use this product. Next slide. Uh, the hair growth therapy is going for $25. The beard growth oil is going for $20. It is a monthly supply. And uh, I do have recurring customers. They come back every month. So what I'm working on right now is to do a subscription model in the website that I just got up. And it's available through the website, Etsy, eBay, OfferUp, um, Sally's here in Ada, uh, and other physical locations. I have two in Texas and four in Oklahoma, um, Artmore, um, Paul's Valley, Edmond, and Oklahoma City. Um, or the and, uh, barber and beauty shops that are here. Next slide. My marketing strategy is word of mouth, referrals, testimonials. Social media has played a huge part since the competition, um, Instagram and Facebook. And um, I believe when I started, uh, I had like a hundred and something followers and the followers have doubled. So I'm extremely excited about that. And it's just May. So <laughs> next slide. My team is my family and um, it's my mom, of course, and myself and uh, my children. And um, my daughter's in Denver, Colorado. So she has product that they're in Denver. And uh, they helped me out with Instagram, Facebook, uh, passing the word around. What I'm looking for is actually someone to help me market these platforms in advertising. And uh, I will call them quote unquote foot soldiers to um, go out there because uh, and, and to target the people that are in need. And um, but, uh, you know, so I will talk to them about that. Um, next slide. 
this is my mom and i told you all that my mom has been bald twice my mom's hair has grown back twice and the latest the second picture is in april and so i have a picture of may that uh we didn't put on here but it's even longer than that so um that's my mom y'all and this is how it came about <laughs> uh next slide Thank you. Are there any questions? You can follow me on Facebook. Yes, you will. Organic hair growth therapy and beard growth oil. And uh, if there's, I even have a donation page on the website. So even if there's someone that you know that will benefit from the product and you want to purchase that for them, then it'll go through PayPal and then I will send it to their address and help them out that way as well. Uh, I actually do have a question. Um, okay. So, hi, by the way. My name is uh, Chris, and I'm pretty new to uh, showing up to these meetings, uh, so forgive me. Um, so, I have a couple questions. Uh, the American Academy of Dermatology, uh, is there a way for you to get a certificate uh, from them or something from them saying, all right, hey, you know, this product works great for cancer patients uh, or it works great for people with natural hair loss or something like that? Is that possible? You're on mute. I'm sorry, I'm new to this Zoom. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about that. I, I know that I've just started with, um, I'm in the uh, trademark um, process. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm waiting on that to get registered for me to move to the next step, which is to go to Amazon because it's listed on a lot of other uh, platforms. But with them, um, I think that I, what I was really doing was waiting on that to come and then going to CTCA, which is Cancer Treatment Center of America, mm -hmm. and having a discussion with someone there because my mom you know, was there, you know, at CTCA. So I went there with her and I saw that there were a lot of men and women and especially children as well that could benefit from this product. And so that's where I really want to target, you know, is that. But that's another um, thing I hadn't thought about that to uh, contact them and see if I can go through them. Okay. Uh, I really love the product. I mean, it, it kind of couples really well with some of the products that we make in the cannabis industry, uh, especially for cancer patients. Uh, one of the products we specialize in is uh, Rick Simpson oil um, or RSO, which is for cancer patients. So I see a lot of cancer patients deal with hair loss and natural hair loss. Um, and, and this is a company that I haven't really seen before. So I really love it. I really do. Uh, are you located here in Ada? Uh, yes. Where are you based out of? Here? Uh well right now I'm at home and um so uh I just I travel. Mm -hmm. I travel just you know. Okay. And you say you could get it here in Ada at Sally's? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Ask for it, Lena. All right. That's all I have. I appreciate it. Thank you. Great questions. Um and any more questions, feel free to shout it out if, uh, if you have a question because we don't have a lot of people on Zoom, so. I have a question. Is it only for cancer patients or like no. if I wanted thicker hair, could I use it? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I, I, I target the cancer patients because of my mom and um, um, there were some um, some other ladies before I got into the pricing. I was just giving it to people. I was just blessing people with it uh, because it worked on my mom. I'm a user of it. It worked on me. Um, and I did this yesterday since it's only a few people on here, but it is going to be live. So let me just show you all this. This is this is a protective style I have on my hair, but this is my hair right here. So I'm sorry. Can you see that in the picture? Yeah. Okay, so my hair uh, has benefited from the product as well. And, um, but as I was stating earlier, I was targeting uh, first ladies at the church and things like that. And they, um, some of them, you know, were cancer recipients, but um, it also worked on my clients. Uh, not only am I a cosmetologist, I'm a barber, I'm a master cosmetology instructor and a master barber instructor as well. So I serve a multi-generational clientele base with the oldest of being 93 um, for, a male and uh, for male pattern baldness. 
and his hair has uh, begun to grow. And also, um, I've had people to use it on their infants for cradle cap, and it will clear up the cradle cap and then have hair growth restoration. And um, so it works on everybody of all races. So, you so I've got a quick question. <laughs> <laughs> Those are um, words that I like to hear. Yeah. <laughs> so I see that your strategy has been kind of regional in, in your approach, you know, looking at, you know, Texas, Oklahoma. Is there a reason why you've taken a regional approach or are you interested in scaling to having national sales? Is there some reason that you're looking at one or the other? Um, well, because my family was there. And so when I started, I was starting from the inside and then branching out. Um, I didn't start branching out until I started with the competition. And so um, it was like my dad, my daddy needed it, my sister needed it, my grandfather needed it, uh, my mom, you know, um, and then I was doing people in my community. Well, um, after that, after the competition, now I'm branching out. And um, I even had uh, phone calls from the United Kingdom, you know, so um, it's, it's get the word is getting out there. Well, and I think with a product like yours, I mean, having something like an infomercial video, uh, <laughs> I mean, in all seriousness, I mean, that that's exactly what this is, is it something where uh, it's a product that you need a video really to explain it the way that you want it to, because I mean, how do you tell, you know, your mom's story or, you know, some of your other customer story without some type of video, because I mean, you want to elicit an emotional response when people look at your product. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm excited to see when your video comes out. Well, I've, I've done several interviews mm -hmm. and um, so I have those and I actually got her from Dallas, went and picked her up from Dallas, brought her to Paws Valley, Oklahoma, and we did a video on there and she was said, you know, she was a diabetic and, you know, all this and her hair, you know, was still growing. She's on all these medications and her hair was still growing. And so um, I was looking, I was doing that, those little interviews, you know. Um, and, uh, I was on a line on yesterday and it's going through a cable company and it's either seven minutes, uh, 15 minutes, uh, seven seconds, 15 seconds or 30 seconds for uh, a commercial on their cable site. So, okay. um, that is like confirmation to me. And if you have any details or any leads or anything like that on a commercial or whatever, Hey, I'm game. And if I need to go and get people, I'll get people because they'll tell their story. That's actually a really good uh, segue to like and a question I had. And um, so, you know, this community of people who are watching, they're on this call, uh, they, they support local business, several other, other, other entrepreneurs or uh, in different ways they help businesses. So is there something that you haven't asked for the community how they can help you move your business forward? Me? Um, yes, I would need someone uh, to mentor me, to help me to um, work out the platforms like the Facebook ad managers, you know, um, because I'm spending a lot of money through the ad uh, campaigns, you know, and uh, that's how a lot of people are hearing from it in the United Kingdom and, you know, places like that because of the target areas that I'm putting in there. So, um, yeah, I, I help with that. And then, um, um, oh, just spreading the word out. If I could get product to them, and I know that there are people that will benefit from it, you know. So, um, it's just getting the word. I'm only one person, and I'm, I'm here. And so, um, any, any other leads or anyone that would want to help me to join or, you know, whatever, because I don't call it a business. I call it my ministry, you know? Um, and so um, that's why when you were like, well, this is your business. I'm like business. Um, I, <laughs> I see it as a ministry by blessing people and helping people because it, it, it not only allows for their hair to grow, but if you look at certain people, I've gone through people with low self-esteem, uh, confidence issues, um, they don't, they don't, uh, um, they feel a certain way they hide, 
you know, and when their hair starts growing, they'll show me little snippets of it. But when their hair has grown, they showed me a full scale picture of them. And it's like, wow, their self esteem has really come out. You know, they feel great about themselves. And our hair is our crown and glory. And so without that, you feel some type of way. But um, I, I enjoy being a part of the hair journey with them. And I would like to be a part of everybody's journey. Um, because it's exciting. <laughs> it's exciting. And um, it just, it makes them feel better, you know, from the outside in. And I, I like that. And that's on every person. I think, I think that's a great mission statement and a value proposition that you have there. And kind of summarizing what I heard is that you're needing marketing help to be specific and sounds to me like an, an awesome marketing internship opportunity. So I'll just put it out there. If anyone's looking for a few hours a week uh, marketing internship opportunity, let Akila know. Um, let's see, we have about five more minutes and um, w one more question kind of off business, but on the same topic. When we started working together uh, for the Startup Ada Bootcamp and Pitch Competition, you've come a long way, when it, whether it's coming to presenting or just business knowledge. What advice uh, do you have uh, for those who are aspiring to start their business and um, give pitch presentations? What, what is your advice to them? Keep going. Don't give up. No matter how... Um... <sighs> No matter what you may be feeling on the inside, just continue to go, you know, um, because with me, I was as scared as I don't know what, but I continue to go to every, to the workshop, uh, to get, go to the workshop, get practice, you know, um, you'll open up, you'll see the people that are there. Um, it was a huge step for me because I, that was like stepping out of my comfort zone. I've never done that before. And then being in front of people and, Oh my gosh, having a big screen with somebody's, you know, face on there. Oh my gosh, that was oh, intimidating. But <laughs> but I pushed through, I got through it, and you'll meet some really great people that'll help you out along the way. And uh you won't feel alone, you know. So that's that's on me. Awesome. I think that's great advice. Um Guys, do we have any more questions for Akila? And I'm sure she's happy to share her content information. I have shared the link to her Facebook, but um, last call for questions. Hey, I Akilah. would like to get a hold to me. Uh, I actually hold certifications in every single social media platform. Um, so you're more than welcome to get a hold of me anytime. Uh, I live right here in Ada. Um, I just had surgery, so I'm kind of stuck at the house, uh, but uh, I'm more than willing to uh, help you increase your social media presence or get some videos out there. Um, in fact, I know a couple of video editors there at ECU as well. Um, so, you know, when fall gets back in session and everyone can get back in our labs, I'm sure we can make something happen on the video side as well. Yay! Thank you! <laughs> And Akila, I, I was going to just say what Dia said. I, I watched you at the big pitch and it was so obvious that you were enthusiastic and excited about your project, but that was way outside of your comfort zone, which would have been mine too. Your presence here this morning is just amazing. I mean, it's so obvious that you've pushed through that, you know, terrified part of your presentation um, and you can't listen to you and not be enthusiastic about your product. So good job. Thank I you. Awesome. I think, uh, I think that was a great presentation and great start. Can we all do a thank you to Akila? Great job. <laughs> Proud of you. All right. So moving on, we have one more speaker today and uh, this is um, Casey. I muted myself. Uh, Casey Black is a student at East Central University studying the master's in management. Um, her company is called the V-Count Monitor, which is a portable solution to white blood cell monitoring, thus helping consumers reduce the risk of infection from exposure to unwanted germs from visiting to the hospitals and to the blood work. The V-Count Monitor gives the consumers immediate test results as opposed to waiting days for results from their physicians. As I mentioned, Casey is an East Central University student, and she placed second overall at the Love's Entrepreneurs Cup this year, and it was ECU's first.
first time competing in the graduate degree. So big congratulations and thank you for joining us today. Um, it's all yours. Okay, so my Wi-Fi is a little, little bit finicky, so I probably won't get to have my video on, but I will share my screen and give my presentation. Hang on just a second. There's fun background music. Sorry, my computer likes to just run real slow. Casey, I was going to say, I also have your presentation uh, on file if you need help with that. Maybe because my computer is not wanting to multitask today. Okay, no worries. Let me, let me do that real quick. All right, Casey, can you see that? All right, there we go. Casey, are you still there? Her house's Wi-Fi really is that bad. <laughs> well, Casey is actually in Florida and joining us from there. Um, uh. And we've, uh, we did our practice and it worked. But we <laughs> her there for one second. I was feeling bad for her until you said that. So, <laughs> yeah, Sorry. She's joining her, uh, joining us from our vacation. So, really appreciate. Oh my gosh. Let me text her real quick and Well, while we got a second, what does everybody do? I see, uh, Amy, you used to be the executive director of Ada Main Street. Correct. How'd you like that? I loved it for seven years. It was great. Um, and I will never, you know, once you're in Main Street, you're never out. It just gets in your blood. So, uh, but my new job at First United Bank is also community outreach related. So I get to continue 
kind of that outreach on a, a banking marketing level. So okay, my landlord is uh, Letha. I love Letha. <laughs> I I also sort- love Letha. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's kind of her role with a twist. Okay. What made you want to leave Main Street? Uh, I work a lot <laughs> with like Ardmore's Main Street, uh, and those people are never leaving. So, <laughs> Jeff Dimicelli mm-hmm. is Ardmore's Main Street director. Um, it was just an opportunity to continue to do what I love to do with um, some some benefits that weren't available to me otherwise, um, and the fact that I didn't really have to detach myself from Main Street. Okay, uh, so. We have a new great executive director y'all will meet on these meetings soon. Her name is Marissa Tucker. So there's my. She owns Tucker's Tulips out south of town and then they grow sunflowers in the summer. When I first met here, I met the people who own the tree farm. Right. (laughs) I actually really like those people. They're super informative. Oh yeah. Well, y'all will love Marissa. She's an entrepreneur as well. So, I, I legitimately believe, like, if you're going to a city that deals a lot with entrepreneurs, you have to have the experience in that. Because if you don't, like, how do you logically know what your entrepreneurs actually need? No. And she's going to be able to relate to non to the small business owners on a level that you know I can't personally relate to. So it's it's great. So Chris and I'll just carry this while we're waiting, Dia, until That's you fine. shut up. I've been stuck in my I'm house so for sorry. seven days straight. I'm going crazy. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. My Wi-Fi is a little bit unstable, and it decided to just kick me out completely. <laughs> it said you were doing, like, three things at once, so. So like Dia said, I uh, competed in Love's Cup this spring. So um, I'm gonna kind of give a condensed version of my presentation that I competed with. And um, of course I'm seeking any kind of mentorship possible. So I'll start with a 90 second pitch of my business and then I'll go into the why and how we're gonna get this going from the ground up. So imagine for a moment the person you love more than anything in the entire world looks at you and says if i catch the coronavirus it'll be the thing i can't beat as you look into their eyes something is different and at that moment you realize that they're right right now this is the reality for 25.2 million americans who live with weakened immune systems and autoimmune diseases with low white blood cell counts these individuals lack their body's natural defense against infection As COVID-19 spreads like wildfire, these individuals need to stay in, but have no way to monitor their white blood cell count from home. Hello, my name is Casey Black, CEO of Y-Count, and we have found a way to meet the need for this consumer with the Y-Count monitor. Similar to the way a blood glucose monitor is used, this portable device allows consumers the ability to monitor their white blood cell count from home, providing them with an accurate test result immediately. Through partnerships with local manufacturing firms, Y-Count will bring the Y-Count monitor to market at an affordable pricing structure for consumers. Pending FDA approval, the Y-Count monitor will be available for consumer use in 2023 and enter the market starting in Oklahoma and expand into new markets each quarter. To complete the development stage for FDA approval, Y-Count is seeking a first round investment of $2 million for a 10% equity stake in the company. Will you join me and the Y-Count team And together, we will be a company people count on. Thank you. So that was a 90 second pitch, a little elevator speech, like what you can give to someone that you meet. And now I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna go into my presentation. So again, my name is Casey Black and I'm the CEO and founder of Y-Count along with my founding partner, Tyler Vasquez Doran, who is our chief design officer and biomedical engineer. So Y Count came about a few years ago when my grandma was in the hospital for knee surgery. So my grandma has always had really, really low white blood cell counts and her levels were very low when she went in for surgery. And so her doctor monitored them before, during and after surgery and her levels continued to drop and continued to drop. And when she 
checked out of the hospital when she was in the extended care nursing home, she contracted an infection because her levels continued to drop and her body was not able to fight off that infection like someone with healthy, normal levels of white counts because your white counts you know, are your infection fighters. And so I called Tyler and I said, listen, I know, I know that other people have to deal with this, that they feel powerless when they leave the hospital, that they're always having to go to the hospital and doctor and have lab work done. What can we do to fix this? And so with my love, oh, next slide. With my love for people and Tyler's passion for research and development and extensive background in biomedical devices for patients, we have founded a patient-focused research and development company who will provide alternative monitoring options for our patients so those individuals that have low white blood cell counts are able to monitor it on the go. And we are able to do this through partnering with local manufacturing firms because we support the local. We are an Oklahoma-based company and pride ourselves in staying local. Next slide. Next slide. And of course, we can't bring a medical device to market without an awesome advisory board and ours is bar none. So with our strategic business consultant, Stacey, Dr. Stacey Bolin, and our scientific research advisor and histology specialist, Dr. Andrews, and our private accountant and investor relations consultant, Buffy Ledlitz, and then our legal team of John Hargrave and Chloe Tyler, we are able to follow all of the legal avenues to get our device to market and make sure that with being an investor race company that we have someone on our team that will be there to continually keep our investors happy and make be that sounding board between the company and the investor. Okay, next slide. So we've talked a lot about white blood cells, but what is a white blood cell? So your white blood cell is your body's first line of defense against infection. So think of them as the little ninjas in your blood that their only job is to fight off infection. Like that's the only job that they do. And so any bacteria or antibody that's not accustomed to your body, it is their job to fight off. So when you have frequent fluctuations in these levels, it is a sign to physicians that you have something, something serious going on and it's an early sign, early detection of infection. And those individuals who are immunocompromised have, have to monitor their levels more often because they don't, their levels are really low or really high. So their average level normal level for white blood cells is 4.5 to 11. So that's 4,500 to 11,000 leukocytes per microliter of blood. So when your levels are scary low, you, your body doesn't have those ninjas to fight off the infection, which goes into our market need of people with autoimmune diseases and weakened immune systems. So in the United States alone, there are 23.5 million Americans who have an autoimmune disease. That is one in 14 Americans. And people with weakened immune systems, so there are lots of reasons why someone could have a weakened immune system, but for market research and market need purposes, we use the 1.7 million Americans who are diagnosed with cancer each year. Because when you, when someone is diagnosed with cancer, it's not, their immune system isn't compromised for the short term. It's a long-term thing that they have to learn to adjust their life accordingly, which leaves our total market need at 25.2 million Americans. Next. And so this is the white count monitor. So we have, we have, we, on step one, it's a vial that contains an enzyme specific to leukocytes. So we think of it as a pack, the Ms. Pac-Man game, how when the blood reacts to it, the Pac-Man is only going to eat the leukocytes. So when she goes around and eats all of the little leukocytes, it'll change color similar to the way a pool dipstick is used. So when you stick the pool dipstick into the pool and you pull it out and it changes colors, that's the exact science that we are using in this vial. So when the patient opens the vial and lances their finger on the medical grade needle that's built into the vial, it allows three drops of blood to drop in and the patient will then secure it and shake it back and forth so that the enzymes have a chance to attach to the leukocytes and then 
they stick it into the Y count monitor. And so the way the monitor reads how many white blood cells the patient has in their blood is through a UV spectrometer that's built into the device. So it'll shine light through the vial and it bounces back all of the, all of the enzymes that have changed the leukocytes color and provides a simple readout for the patient to see which stores up to eight readings so the patient can go back and see, okay, how, what was, what was my reading last week and what was my reading the week before? That way they can see if their levels are fluctuating because there is such a wide range of what normal is for a white blood cell. So knowing, having a simple readout, okay, 6.7 normal or 4.2 low or 12.8 high, having that easy to read easy to understand readout for the patient was something that was really important. And of course, with bringing a medical device to market, you want to make sure that the device is working accurately. And so with each kit, when the patient purchases, it comes with a testing file and strip. And so the customer can check their device that way it's monitoring correctly every 20 uses. That way they are confident in the accuracy that the device is providing. And because white blood cell monitoring testing or white blood cell testing is not something that is required as often as a blood glucose monitor, which is similar to the way this device is used. So you would only have to monitor your white blood cell counts every week, every week to two weeks, just depending on how at risk you are. And each kit comes with 10 replacement or 10 vials with the monitor and the control solution. And so that is a two and a half month supply for our consumers. Okay, you'll probably have to click through a lot. So this is our price breakdown of each. We have had preliminary conversations with manufacturing companies to kind of get uh, what the production cost would be and through partnerships with manufacturing firms to eliminate heavy startup costs they will um, in having a product that they believe in will have a production cost and then they'll just have a 10 percent upcharge per device and then on the back end when per device is sold per device is sold will have a 1.5 percent of revenue. So our production cost per kit is $250 each. So the manufacturing upcharge is 10% from that. So it's $25. And so that making the total cost of goods sold at $275 per kit and our wholesale price, which would be to local pharmacies and medical device companies will be a 40% markup off cost of goods sold. And our retail price is what we will sell on our website and suggest MSRP to all of our wholesalers will be an 80% off markup off of cost of goods sold. And because this is something that they will have to replace their vials, the vial replacement price will be $90 per package of 10. So it's a $10, $10 replacement vial, which is again a two and a half month supply of vials. Casey, I'll just jump in real quick. If we can uh, maybe look at wrapping around three, four minutes more, that way we have some time yeah. for Absolutely. And so again, when we enter into the market, we have to recognize our competitors. And of course, our a, a big competitor and a direct competitor is a full panel blood test. And then our uh, other direct competitors are mail order white blood cell test kits and a light refracting microscope. All right. And then, like we said, we our market entry, we will enter the market starting in Oklahoma and expand into new markets each quarter. And so our company kind of what it looks like for now and as we expand in the next few years. So we have Tyler and I as um, the two employees right now and we will add a CFO with sales star and a marketing officer as we ramp up for sales to begin and then hire your sales representatives and a quality assurance engineer as we expand. And so our investment opportunity. So again, we said that we are seeking around 
one investment of $2 million for a 10% equity stake in the company, and then round two investment of $29 million for a 60% equity stake in the company to help cover all of our FDA approval costs because with this kind of device, it needs, we, there are lots of legal avenues and FDA approval costs that are associated with it. And of course, in our round two investments, our round one investors will have first option to invest in round two for an additional 10% equity stake in the company, totaling a 70% equity stake in the company. Thank you. And do you have any questions? Um, let me ask you off with one question. Um, what stage of the prototype are you in? What are your plans with that uh, prototype? So we're in the very, very beginning stages of prototype. We've just done the initial design, and but the creation of the prototype is something that we will need to partner with a manufacturing firm and work in the lab to create. That way we have a functioning one to apply for FDA approval. Hey, Casey, did you question? ever figure out an answer to the question I asked you? I think I've slept since then. Okay, what was your question? What's going to make me buy yours instead of the one on Amazon? What is going to make me buy mine? Because we are a local entrepreneur. We are founded in Oklahoma, and we have the heart for our product and our patients, and our patients are our top priority, and you buy part of a company and not just a thing from Amazon. You invest in people. Casey, this is Jim Eldridge with Ada Jobs Foundation. I was curious if um, any of the recent changes with the pandemic have a changed the outlook for investors or with grants or with some type of public funding for your uh, company or project. So what, because, because of the pandemic, so this is something that with COVID-19, symptoms don't show for 14 days and you could have it, not know it, and your body could be trying to fight it off and you don't know it. And so the FDA has been fast tracking product devices and products that would benefit from that and that would help um, kind of see what kind of, um, FDA is fast tracking things associated with COVID-19 and because this is something that would be able to monitor your white blood cells to see, because they drop significantly or spike significantly when your body is trying to fight off an infection. And when that happens, it, having fluctuations would be able to fast track that. But I mean, it is kind of a scary world right now. And so investments would not, or people are not as likely to invest in the unknown at the moment, but for as far as FDA approval, they have been fast tracking items and this would be one that they would consider to fast track. Great, and just the reason I ask is we've noticed that there is significant amounts of funding going to uh, healthcare research related to anything, anything attached to the coronavirus. So we've noticed that in the CARES Act, um, you know, brief that uh, National Institute of Health, you know, National Science Foundation, other organizations are funding this at, funding research at this level in significant ways. And I was just curious if you were aware of that or um, had taken any of that into account. I was not aware of that actually. <laughs> Interesting, I will have to look into that for sure. And we'd be and happy to connect you. part of the CARES you. Act? Yes, okay, yes, yeah. so. For sure. Um, And something that's this caliber, you know, any any kind of grant work is greatly welcomed. Any other questions? I think Casey, maybe uh, uh, one more question is um, how can, how do you see as you move forward, this community helping you or um, I think we just had a good conversation about financing, but is there anything else you're particularly looking for or that this community can help you with? I think speaking wise counsel is always really important. So 
you know, you guys have been in entrepreneurship and in the business world a lot longer than I have and the experience. And I think just seeking the wise counsel in that sense and mentorships to make sure that I'm going in the right direction and I'm not just like way out in left field and need to be reined in just a little bit. I mean, uh, just a community, I think, of people that support sometimes the crazy ideas that we're passionate about. Absolutely. And since you have a few more minutes, do you want to share with us a little bit about your experience at Lost Up this year? I know you just did it virtually, so it was a little different from presenting in person. And Dr. Bowen, feel free to chime in, but how was that um, experience like? It was uh, definitely different. So I'm very, very much so a people person. So I was an adjustment trying to learn to give a presentation behind a screen because I'm more reactive to let me look at everyone's faces, then I can respond and I'm very, I'm a conversationalist when I present. And so this is, it was very different. And as Dr. Boland can account for, <laughs> there were some definite mishaps when we first started practicing presenting, but I had, I mean, it was wonderful. Everyone that I have like worked with at I2E and have had conversations with since Love's Cup, they've always been like super welcoming and um, really supportive. And they're like, you've got a great idea. And I'm like, oh, thanks. And so, I mean, I've, it was an awesome experience. I never thought that I would ever do it, but Dr. Boland said, mm, you should try. And I'm like, okay, well, we'll see. And Turns out she's always known me better than I realized I know myself, so. Yeah, I think yeah, half the people in this room are her students. <laughs> Love's Cup was definitely different this year, but if it was a good experience, nonetheless. That's awesome, and we are definitely always so proud of uh, East Enfield and our students and um, advisors who make this possible. I bought a boat with my winnings. Absolutely, and Chris, we look forward to you soon in one of the coming months, so looking forward to that. Um, do we have any more questions for Casey? Okay, well, we'll definitely, uh, uh, Jim, did you have anything? No, I just appreciate everyone for getting on. Uh, can I ask you two a question, actually? Um, so, obviously, most of the people in this room are either Professor Boland's students uh, or prior students or current business owners within here at Ada. How do we get people who aren't business owners to log into these Zoom meetings and take part on their phone? Because, I mean, I know a lot of people, you know, just here in the community that have ideas or, uh, you know, they want to be entrepreneurs and they have no idea how and they're not going to go to college. Uh, so this is the next best route for them to be able to, uh, you know, talk with all of us and figure out what we're doing uh, versus, you know, what they have in mind. So how do we get them more involved in this? Because at the end of the day, it, it's great for us to converse, but I mean, we can meet at a coffee shop, uh, whereas we really want you know, more citizens of Ada to be part of this. So how do we do that? So just to make sure, Ivor, are you asking how do we get people involved that want to start a company or have an idea to be How do we get them involved in this meeting so they want to do that? So we do have, have a program. To do so. so we do have a program that, uh, you know, you heard about Aquila going through, which is our Startup Ada Bootcamp. Mm -hmm. And our approach to that was to take someone that just, had never had experience starting a business, never been through this process before. Just someone maybe that had some experience, you know, running a business, you know, taking in sales, that kind of thing. And the whole point of the boot camp was over six, a six week period, a six week, six week period, sorry, I can't talk today. Um, give them just the really basic lean skills they would need to start a company. So it's just the meat and potatoes, just the facts really practical on the ground information. So we had a lot of, um, in our first one last year, we had a lot of information from practitioners, from people that are used to running businesses, that are used to counseling businesses. And it was a very practical, pragmatic approach to, by the time you're done with this, our hope was that you would be ready to pitch to investors. Um, and we followed that up with our big pitch event, our second annual big pitch event to give them experience pitching in the community. Um, and that was, I think, good for people that maybe didn't go through Love's Cup or, you know, were out of college and weren't necessarily involved in the Tiger 
tank competition. So we think that's a really, really good entry point for people that have an idea that want to get involved. Um, certainly, you know, we're opening this up to, you know, community wide um, and giving entrepreneurs in our community a chance to get feedback from people all over. Um, I believe this is the second month we've had this format. So we are going to keep working out, you know, anything that comes up and, and make it just kind of build incrementally. But that's our approach is that we wanted to at least establish this and start building it up from there. Dia, did we cover that? Yeah, I think, I think that's a great gist of what we're trying to do. And Chris, uh, honestly, it's, I think, like Akila was mentioning, word of mouth. It's like, you know, we've started this event, but really getting the word on the community, because a lot of times when people see entrepreneurship or business events, they think it's not for them or they're not ready yet. So we really need the help of you guys to help share this and uh, get this event out because um, especially with this monthly event, our goal is we can connect those early stage and aspiring entrepreneurs to people in the community who are working in, whether it's finance, marketing, uh, mentors, we want to make that connection. So we really need you guys help to spread the word and uh, get people to hop on, whether it's on Facebook Live or um, on Zoom. But with that, we're hitting 10, uh, 10 a.m. Uh, I'll leave the Zoom call open for 30 minutes after for these great discussions. But just want to wrap up with uh, thank you all so much for uh, coming today, especially to the speakers. Really appreciate you guys and what you're doing. Very proud of you. And we are all here to help you guys grow. Um, if you know of someone who could be a presenter, I'm going to email the uh, form. We have a form that you can um, fill out to apply to be a presenter. Please do that. Uh, stay connected with us on Facebook. And we will see you next month uh, on the second Wednesday in July. So thank you all.